Hello everyone. It is my honor to introduce our product. Today, I would like to present to you our InVivo imaging system. InVivo and in vitro are relative terms. In the past, in vivo imaging referred to cellular imaging, such as the one shown in the leftmost image. However, nowadays it pertains to individual level imaging of laboratory animals or experimental organisms. In vivo imaging systems are not limited to imaging individual images, but it can also capture ex vivo images of dissected tissue, as illustrated in the two pictures on the right. Furthermore, it is an imaging device capable of imaging in vitro from microtubes or plates. The picture provided is a macro imaging and not magnified. This field is what we are interested in. In fact, in vivo imaging devices are commonly found in hospitals. Devices such as PET, CT, and MRI visualize human diseases non-invasively for diagnostic purposes. However, what we specialize in is optical imaging. Unlike previous devices that are typically used in hospitals, optical imaging was originally developed for research purposes. Optical images are categorized into luminescence and fluorescence. While optical imaging is a widely used method in the field of biological research, and therefore can be easily applied. There are several competing products on the market, including Perkin Elmer's Ivis, an all in one product that performs both bioluminescence and fluorescence imaging. Since Ivis focuses on bioluminescence imaging, it is equipped with a highly sensitive camera and has a complex structure that contains all the necessary parts for both types of imaging. This factor drives up the product's price and makes maintenance difficult. Other products also have a complex structure, either as an all in one type, similar toybees, or using high spec components such as lasers, which makes them expensive. So, we decided to develop separate devices for bioluminescence and fluorescence imaging, with a simple design focused on the essential components. This approach allowed us to produce high quality images while keeping the cost low. Furthermore, our devices have a compact and simple structure, making them easy to use and maintain. The luminescence device is named Lucy, and the fluorescence device is named Phoebe. First, let me introduce the fluorescence in vivo imaging system, Phoebe. We strongly believe that developing an imaging system that is both easy and convenient to use is crucial for researchers, especially given the already complex and time-consuming nature of biological experiments. By offering a simple and user-friendly imaging system like Phoebe, we hope to save researchers time and effort, freeing them to concentrate on the science rather than the technical aspects of imaging. This, in turn, can lead to more efficient and productive research outcomes. Phoebe uses a color camera, even though the sensitivity of a black and white camera is three times higher than that of a color camera. However, since fluorescence emits relatively bright light, Having the advantage of a color image is more beneficial than simply increasing sensitivity. With color information, the fluorescence signal and background can be distinguished more clearly, providing more intuitive data. As shown in the figure, black and white images only show intensity, which can make it difficult to differentiate between the signal and background. In contrast, with color information, the signal and background can be differentiated by color, allowing for immediate identification of the location and intensity of the signal. Another advantage of Phoebe is the camera used for fluorescence, which allows for fast image processing. In fact, the processing speed is so fast that it can capture fluorescence signals in real time, like a video. Although these videos may not always be suitable for paper data, they can be very helpful in quickly detecting fluorescence signals. If the image speed is slow, it may be easy to miss the signal and give up. However, with Phoebe's fast processing speed, researchers can try to find the fluorescence signal from different angles and perspectives, such as placing the mouse sample upright or flipping it over. Phoebe is a compact imaging system that can help you save valuable lab space, and it's also portable enough to be easily transported on a cart between your animal lab and general lab, making it highly convenient to use. Phoebe has a simple structure, with few internal parts, making maintenance and operation easy. 
Hobie's four channels cover a wide range of fluorescent materials commonly used in bio-research, from GFP to ICG. It also allows for customization of channels with specific wavelengths. Additionally, it can be used in open settings, such as during surgery or with plant pots. For simpler checks, there is a small product available without a camera, but it is limited to basic visual inspection. Phobie is designed to produce high-quality images, as that is the main purpose of imaging equipment. Allow me to showcase some sample data that demonstrates the capabilities of Phobie. Initially, we checked in autofluorescence, which is essential for obtaining accurate results. In some cases, hairy mice are used, and since hair interferes with light, it is necessary to remove it before imaging. However, even with hairless animals, there is a possibility of a false signal. As shown in the sample data, autofluorescence from digestive juices appears strongly in the stomach and intestine in the red channel. Therefore, when image of the abdomen, such autofluorescence should be kept in mind. Similarly, in the case of plants, the blue channel shows strong autofluorescence caused by the chlorophyll of the chloroplast. Phobie removes this autofluorescence by using an optimized filter. The first application of in vivo imaging is for tumoration detection. As shown in the picture on the left, it is possible to obtain an image that accurately shows the size of a tumor growth in vivo. However, in some cases, obtaining an image in vivo may be impossible, and in such cases, ex vivo imaging, as shown in the picture on the right, can be performed to obtain images that allow for quantitative data analysis. GFP has traditionally been widely used for fluorescence imaging in stable cell lines, but such samples often exhibit strong background fluorescence and low light transmission, making imaging challenging. As a result, long wavelength fluorescence genes such as IRFP are increasingly being used for such applications. The second application of in vivo imaging is for tracking stem cells and immune cells. To introduce fluorescent genes into these cells, lentivirus is typically used due to its high gene expression efficiency in mammalian cells. However, the use of viruses can alter the characteristics of stem cells, making it difficult to use fluorescent genes for tracking. As an alternative, fluorescent dyes such as DIT can be used to stain the cells via a simple chemical reaction. Additionally, there are nanoparticles that can be used to insert fluorescent material into the cytoplasm of the cells. By staining stem cells and immune cells in this way, researchers can track their survival and movement within the animal. Next application is drug tracking. Nowadays, many drugs are developed to target specific sites in the body. Fluorescence imaging can be used in preclinical studies to measure the targeting efficiency of these new drugs, and this is where FOBI is mostly utilized. Due to limitations in optics, in vivo imaging can sometimes be difficult. In such cases, tracking and quantitative data can be obtained through ex vivo imaging of sacrificed mice. Fluorescence imaging is advantageous over luminescence imaging as it allows for the labeling of cells and drugs with different colors, enabling the confirmation of various functions in the same animal. In the presented data, green fluorescence indicates the tumor, while red fluorescence indicates stem cells, which have the function of inhibiting tumor growth. This was confirmed through in vivo imaging, as shown in the picture on the left. After the experiment, the entire brain was dissected and imaged ex vivo. By slicing the brain, it was observed that the stem cells had ultimately moved around the tumor and inhibited its growth, as confirmed in the image on the right. Before injecting cells and drugs labeled with fluorescence into animals for in vivo imaging, it is necessary to check the fluorescence intensity in vitro. If the in vivo imaging is not good, in vitro data can help identify the cause. In some cases, in vitro data is also used in research publications. Using fluorescence to check gene expression in plants, as in the example of genetically modified rice expressing GFP, allows for a much more efficient and non-destructive method of confirming successful gene transfection compared to traditional methods such as PCR analysis of leaf samples. Without this technique, researchers would have to plant the rice, wait for it to sprout, collect leaf samples, perform PCR analysis, harvest the seed, and then proceed to the next experiment, which would take a cycle time of the plant's life. By using fluorescence, 
the expression of the GFP gene can be easily and quickly confirmed, saving time and resources. FOBI is a useful tool for experimenting with gene expression in plant leaves. The image on the left shows GFP expression in a portion of a plant leaf. And the image on the right is captured without specific fluorescence, instead displaying autofluorescence from the leaf's chlorophyll. The absence of autofluorescence in the middle of the leaf indicates that it is unhealthy. Therefore, autofluorescence can be used to assess the health of plant leaves. The following is Lucy, a bioluminescence imaging device. Like Phoebe, Lucy is also designed to be compact, simple, and easy to use. The most important function in a bioluminescence imaging system is the sensitivity of the camera. To maintain that sensitivity, we use an EMC CD with a 95% quantum efficiency. Compared to competing products that cost five to six times more than Lucy, we have confirmed that our system has a sensitivity of 90% to 95%. The image quality is also comparable to that of our competitors. The usage of our in vivo imaging system is also easy. The one-click imaging function is a convenient feature where users can adjust exposure time, capture images, and merge them all automatically with just one click. Additionally, once the image is obtained, it is automatically saved in a designated folder to protect valuable data. We hope that you can easily and conveniently obtain excellent data with our in vivo imaging systems. Thank you for your attention.